I have orange hair now. Let's do this. So it's been a hot minute since I recorded myself or sat in front of a camera, so bear with me if this video is a little bit rambly, but this is a video that I have been wanting to make uh, pretty much since I made the decision to get top surgery, uh, which I haven't talked about a lot on this channel. So I got top surgery of April 19th of 2019, and I just wanted to make a uh, one year anniversary video for myself mostly to just kind of reflect on how the year has been um, and see how far I've come and how the recovery process has gone and everything. I am do not identify as trans male. I am a gender and I use they them pronouns, but top surgery uh, ever since I learned about what it was has kind of been I mean, honestly, the first time I learned about it, I was like, wait, you can do that? Like, I grew up and, you know, I got boobs and I just thought that was, you know, well, this is my lot. I guess I'm just gonna have to deal with this. And then I started, I learned about binders, first through cosplay. I think um, it was sort of a crossplay thing at first where I was like, okay, in order to cosplay this male character, I'm gonna have to flatten my chest somehow. And that developed into, oh, you can wear binders outside of cosplay just to make it seem like you have a flat chest. So I started doing that, and then I was like, well, I want a flat chest all the time. Uh, and that's how I got into this whole idea of getting top surgery. And it was a pipe dream at first. I was like, there's no way this is ever going to actually happen. And then I started researching it, and I was like, well, wait, yeah, no, I could. Um, and I've honestly been very lucky uh, with the resources that I have. I was able to, I, a friend recommended me um, a, a local surgeon, so I was able to stay in Austin and do it. I was already seeing a therapist by the time I decided to do this, so I was able to get a letter from him. Um, and then it was just a matter of, you know, meeting with the surgeon and making sure everything was all set. So I think I had a relative, I wouldn't say it was easy, to get top surgery but yeah all of that aside I was able to see a really great surgeon and we got it all squared away honestly what surprised me about meeting the surgeon was like that initial meeting went a lot quicker and a lot smoother than I thought it was going to I thought there was gonna be a lot of back and forth about you know everything that was gonna happen and whether I was sure about this but no I just went in and he was like okay you want to do this and this and this we're gonna do this surgery and you're all good to go any questions and I was like no I guess not <laughs> um, are we good? Are we good to go? So that was in October of 2018, I had my initial appointment. And we scheduled the surgery for April 19th, 2019. And that was probably the worst part, that stretch from October to April was just that uh, tense period of just waiting and making sure that I was fully prepped. Um, because honestly, like the recovery period is as grueling, if not even more so than actually just getting surgery in the first place. Um, and this was my first time. I had surgery when I was like six months old, so I obviously don't remember it. So this was my first conscious memory of getting surgery and it was wild. <laughs> I, I have a very clear memory of being in the hospital bed, waiting to go back. Um, and then they put the um, anesthesia in and then they started wheeling me back and I was like, okay, bye dad, I guess I'll see you later. And then I just conked out and I woke up and it was done. Um, so that was pretty wild. I also have to give a big shout out to my dad for uh, supporting me through this and for driving me to the hospital and making sure that I was all set up at home um, and just being there to sort of help take care of me while I was in my post-surgery fugue state. <laughs> and then it was uh, about four weeks of just staying in bed and not doing anything, which was the worst part. Um, because if you guys don't know, I'm a musician, so uh, it was four weeks of not being able to really play music a lot. And I was dying a little bit inside because I couldn't play my music. And I was like, what if I never become, what if I completely forget all of my musical knowledge and I'm not able to play anymore? <laughs> Spoiler alert, it was fine. I'm still going strong with the music. Um, and honestly, the first time that I was able to hold a flute again, I was very overjoyed and also like, this hurts a lot. But we made it through, so it was okay. But yeah, being bedridden for that long was just, oh, it was, <laughs> it was a time. Recovery is also, it takes a lot longer. I mean, even when you are able to get up uh, and move and are not confined to the bed, um, it's a long, long process. I think, I would say I'm still in uh, the fi kind of final stages of my recovery, as it were. Like, I'm able to do, uh, like, obviously I'm able to express myself and move my arms and everything. I can't stretch too high or too quickly, otherwise it does twinge a little bit. 
but I was able to start like working out again um, slowly but surely and being able to play again. Uh, being able to play piano was a little bit easier because I didn't have to lift my elbows above a certain height to play. But, you know, getting back into all of the other instruments was a very long, I mean, it took me like, I think a couple months before I was able to play all of my instruments comfortably again. So that was a time, um, and that was honestly one of the things that I was dreading the most and, you know, not looking forward to having to stop playing for a while. And, on, and also, I'm the kind of person who, like, in a recovery phase, I'm like, all right, just get up and go, just get up and go. I want to get out of here as soon as possible. I don't want to have to spend time being still and letting my body rest and recover. I don't tend to allow myself a lot of time to just sit and rest because I feel like I constantly need to be doing stuff with my time. So that was a hard part for me was uh, just letting myself recover and having to sit there and know that by doing nothing and sitting still, I was actually enabling myself to be able to get up and do things more quickly and do and be able to recover and stuff so that was a hard time <laughs> but yeah then you know uh we got back into it got back to work got back into doing all of the things that i enjoy doing and it's been a slow but steady uh recovery since then the surgeon that i went to did a great job um and they were very they gave me a lot of good advice on how to recover properly, so like you're supposed to massage the scars. Um, I got a double mastectomy, so it was, you know, two straight lines. I think that's one of, I think that's the most common one that you can get. Um, so it's two straight lines across and you're supposed to massage the scars and put like uh, cream and stuff on them to help them heal faster, um, not lift your arms above a certain height. So over the past year, it's been a slow progression of me being able to do more and more and reach up like this, which I can do now, which, you know, eight months ago I would not have been able to do. <laughs> so I'm very happy that, you know, it's been a pretty smooth recovery process so far. Um, and I went shirtless in public for the first time a couple months ago, or a few months ago now. I think it was sometime last year. Uh, my friends and I went to a pool party, and I went shirtless in public for the first time since getting my surgery. And I was very, very nervous, but once I was there, um, and I was with two of my best friends who have been extremely supportive of me, just in general, throughout my life, um, and once I was there, it just felt so freeing um, because I didn't feel, for the first time, I didn't feel like uh, I was constantly worried about how other people saw me and how they looked at me. Like, I'm sure I got looks just because you could see the scars very clearly, but I wasn't even, I wasn't thinking about it because I was just enjoying being myself in, you know, just out in the world uh, and presenting the way I want to, which, you know, has been a thing for a very long time, is just trying to make my body into something that I'm comfortable being in. Um, that's a very big thing for me in my whole gender process uh, and gender journey is um, just being able to be comfortable in my own skin, which I'm sure a lot of people can relate to. And I did, I was debating whether or not I actually wanted to show my chest. Uh, I think I do, just to co sort of document it a little bit. Um, I have no idea if this is gonna get me flagged. If it does, oh well, I guess, but um, I'm gonna show my chest right now this is what it looks like at one year um, and as you can see this this the left side the left scar has been uh, pretty stubbornly staying uh, very pink um, and then the right side is a little bit uh, less easy to see now I mean, but they're both healing and they're both coming along super great um, yeah and there's been like no complications or anything no uh, no reason to go back to the surgeon which is fantastic um, they did a really great job and yeah yeah I'm honestly I mean there's other stuff in my life that I'm dealing with besides just the top surgery and the chest and the physical dysphoria and everything but in terms of this I am honestly feeling very very happy and I feel like I'm reaching a much better place in my life than I was even just a year ago so yeah if if you are someone who is considering top surgery definitely do as much research as you can and make sure that it's the right decision for you but if it is i mean go for it um it's been a weird long stressful process but a very good one <laughs> i've run out of intelligent ways to 
phrase what I'm trying to say, but hopefully you would get the idea. Uh, and yeah, so April 19th is my one year surgery, post-surgery anniversary, and I wanted to make a cake for myself to celebrate that. So I'm gonna end with a clip of that and a little song that I sang for myself to celebrate our one year post-surgery. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in whatever video comes out next. Okay, bye! Congratulations to me, one year being